Hey guys, this is Akarat Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. We've got a pretty fun topic today because we're covering a story that I think most of you probably have not read, and it details the Rebel Alliance's base within another galaxy. And if you're wondering, well, I didn't even know there were other galaxies in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, there are many. There are several companions, smaller orbiting galaxies to the main Star Wars galaxy, the galaxy far, far away as it's often called, but there were other others as well, the Yuzhan Vong galaxy for example. I've covered a lot of this in a prior video, so if you're interested, I'll link to you in the upper right hand corner. The lore we'll be discussing today comes from Maze Run, an exclusive short story within Star Wars Insider 131. Now I'm actually lucky enough to have my hands on Star Wars Insider 131, so I thought it'd be fun to share it with you guys. The location for this galaxy is the Rishi Maze. The Rishi Maze is one of those companion galaxies to the galaxy far far away Way, actually the closest companion galaxy, which is why it's sometimes called Companion Auric or Companion A. The Rishi Maze is also close to Kamino, and you can actually see it on an official map within Attack of the Clones itself, which is pretty cool. Now I don't have a whole lot of other footage for this episode, so instead I'm going to play you guys some Star Wars Squadrons gameplay I captured before recording, but if you're just interested in the lore, maybe tune that out and just listen to my voice and do something else. So, this story takes place before Han formally joined the Rebel Alliance. He was still an independent smuggler taking on dangerous missions. The Alliance had an energy processing base set up in the Rishi Maze, meant to be, of course, far away from Imperial eyes. The base was very short on supplies, everything from shielding to power generators. So Han was contracted for the very dangerous task of running the Rishi Maze and delivering supplies. Why so dangerous? Well, because Rishi is a small galaxy, and the center of the Rishi Maze is a supermassive black hole. Han says there are huge jets of relativistic plasma, vast fields of gravitation, energy, and debris on all sides. And this is why the maze is called the maze. It's a labyrinth of death. The short story says that the ordinary hyperspace trade lane, the vertical trade lane as it's described, because the Rishi Maze is above the ordinary galaxy when talking about the galactic plane, has been shut down by the Empire, and I assume that's referring to the Zareka string. So because of the blockade and the heavy Imperial presence, Han is forced to take a less direct route, but which in turn means he has to navigate dangers within the maze itself. The maze, of course, was not only dangerous and also difficult to navigate, but it was hard to detect the rebel station within all the background radiation and whatever else. So Han really has his work cut out for him here. The radiation actually becomes so bad that Han has to shut down the cockpit and work from the more secluded and protected engineering station within the ship. As they travel further into the maze and closer to the supermassive black hole, energy and gravity readings are increasing, and really without Han, Chewie, and the Falcon's impressive Nava computer, they probably wouldn't have made it. The Falcon, however, encounters something very strange and unexpected within the Rishi maze. I'll read a quote. Chills went up his spine as he realized what he was really looking at. Not pieces of broken ships, but rather other pieces of a single ship, a battle cruiser, thousands of meters long, its spine long snapped by the impact of the gravitational fields. This was in fact an ancient Sith battle cruiser, one so old that Han didn't even recognize its design from old history books or his time in the Imperial Academy. Despite being dead for probably thousands of years, the Sith ship still had active automated defenses which the Falcon only barely manages to escape, but soon after they actually stumble across the Alliance base, which is described as a rock orbiting a star that in turn was orbiting less than 1.5 terameters from the event horizon of the black hole, with the base itself harnessing the energy of the black hole. As Han communicates with the rebels aboard the base and is about to dock to unload his supplies, Chewbacca gives them one final scan and discovers a beradium bomb. A bomb powerful enough to take out not just the station, but probably a good chunk of the planet that it was orbiting. This was of course a pretty smart setup 
by the Empire, work with smugglers to covertly and accidentally against their will move a bomb into an Alliance base. The only problem is the cargo bay doors aren't working, so although Han knows the bomb's on the ship, he can't easily get rid of it. He's forced to don a spacesuit, move outside on the Millennium Falcon, despite there being a black hole nearby, and manually pull open the door of the cargo hold. Han's actually almost killed here because a piece of debris knocks his spacesuit's power off and he loses his magnetic seal to the Millennium Falcon and starts to drift towards the black hole. As he sees the light from the Beradium bomb just be sucked up in an instant, he's thankfully rescued by the Falcon. And yeah, that's it. They deliver the rest of their cargo and promise to go have a word with the person who set them up on that mission. All in all, Maze Run is a really fun adventure. I love that era of Han and Chewie, the pre-Alliance era, because they did have lots of fun missions, and this one's cool because not only do they encounter a Sith Dreadnought, but they travel to another galaxy. Han almost gets sucked into a black hole and he thinks how that would be a pretty cool way to go out, but of course, they make it out at the end of the day, and Han is reminded that he's a good pilot, but so is Chewie. The story did raise a few questions for me though. First of all, what kind of energy was being harnessed from a black hole? One of the essential cross-section books, I can't remember which one, actually describes facilities around black holes which would take some type of energy and use it to power things like repulsor lifts, so I wonder if that's what the Alliance base was doing there. I mean, other places also describe repulsor lifts as being built on planets like Bakura and the true set Bakura, but I don't know, it's Star Wars, black holes are inconsistent consistently described, especially in a universe which normally doesn't have relativity, either general or special. But the other question is, why didn't the Rebel Alliance set up more bases outside the galaxy? I mean, the more you're making the Empire work and expand themselves, you'd think the more that you can tear apart their defenses and attack vulnerable parts of the Empire. They've got to go all the way to another galaxy to try to hunt you down. That's pretty good for you, especially if it is as dangerous to large ships as it seems to be. I can imagine the Alliance having perhaps a readout somewhere and outside the galaxy, whether the Rishi Maze, Companion Besh, or otherwise. That also reminds me of the end of The Empire Strikes Back. For a long time, it was said that that was another galaxy. I'm talking about that footage I showed at the beginning of the video. Now, I believe the official explanation is that they're looking at a proto star or something, which I think is pretty lame. I like the idea that the Alliance just got their ass beat so bad that they literally have to run away from the galaxy into deep space for a while just to recover. Anyway guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this shorter video, and by the way, if you're interested in black holes and relativity and all that stuff in the Star Wars universe, we recently had a real-life astrophysicist on the podcast that I run with Corey, Tap Cap Transmissions, to discuss the physics and science of Star Wars. So make sure you check that out. I'll link that down in the description, but you can also just look up Tap Cap Transmissions, that's T-A-P-C-A-F Transmissions, on your favorite podcast platform. Until next time though, guys, have a good one, be safe, and may the force be with you.